Welcome to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan, and we're broadcasting live on July 2nd from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. Later on in the show, we're going to take a look at American democracy from a different angle. We'll bring on a professor of law from Stetson University College of Law in Gulfport to talk about yesterday's historic ruling from the U.S. Supreme Court granting presidents immunity for all official actions. We'll find out what that means and what to expect, and we'll open up the phone lines as well so that you can weigh in on what you think about that ruling yesterday. But first, we'll look at American democracy here in Florida. Our first guest is... Former State Representative Jennifer Webb, she represented parts of South Pinellas in the state legislature, and we're going to talk to her about a new group called the Sunshine State Unity Network. It aims to reduce violence, bolster the republic, and restore, restore faith in our democratic institutions in Florida. So welcome to Tuesday Cafe, Jennifer. Thanks, Sam. It's good to be here with you. I'm so glad you could join us. And so tell us, what is the Sunshine State Unity Network? So the Sunshine State Unity Network 100 is an idea that um, former Representative Kurt Kelly, a community leader from Miami, Lisa Lorenzo, who are both Republicans and I came up with and gained support from the Carter Center. And it's a cross-partisan network aimed at um, reinstilling those civic engagement practices that are so important to just participating in in civil life and civic life in the United States, and then also restoring faith in our democratic institutions, including our elections. And so we have candidate principals, we do monthly webinars, and we have on a host of experts who help educate um, a cross-partisan group of individuals on a whole host of topics. And we'll talk more about that as the this segment goes on. But let's first talk about your affiliation with the Carter Center. How are you affiliated with the Carter Center? And remind people what that is. Uh, the Carter Center is President Jimmy Carter's. Um, instead of doing a presidential library, he did an institute or a center in order to bring, in order to help spread the. Um, understanding of democracy and a value of democracy uh, and to help uphold free, fair, safe, and secure elections throughout the world. And so they have long worked in um, countries other than the United States, but with um, the decrease of America's standing on the democratic, uh, for our, our democratic ranking, basically, they, they started to turn their attention to the, to the United States. And then, um, with the growing uh, hyper-partisanship and partisan violence uh, culminating, I think many of us would agree with January 6th, uh, two, uh, four years ago, they said, you know, we definitely have to turn our focus to the US. And so they launched pilot programs in five states uh, across the United States, Florida, Arizona, North Carolina, Georgia, and New Mexico. And that's where they we first began working with, um, in a bipartisan fashion, one Democrat, one Republican, just like um, President Carter worked with uh, the James Baker Institute, a former uh, Republican um, Secretary of State, um, to, to bring attention to our election processes. What can you tell us then about the Democratic ranking of the U.S. and what, what factors are contributing to the fact that it's declining? Many of the factors are faith in uh, our um, faith in our democratic processes and in our institutions to likelihood to vote, um, likelihood to think that violence is the answer if your candidate is in is an elected off to office. Um, the you were talking about the Supreme Court, um, not trusting the rulings coming from the highest courts, all of these things factor in to dem democratic, our democratic ranking. And it's done by a, a nonpartisan um, disinterested group that doesn't wish to like bolster or like downgrade anyone. And they do it for country, for all of the countries across the world. 
So you mentioned that there are similar groups in other states. Is this what's called the Democracy Resilience Project? And so I assume that the Sunshine State Unity Network is one of those and the other states are doing similar work? They are. And it's really wonderful. So we all are bringing together people across the partisan divide from different walks of life. Um, you know, we have we all have, um, you know, former elected officials and neighborhood block captains from, you know, neighborhood associations who aren't engaged in politics, but are engaged in civic life. We all seek to get out messages that restore norms to like a, positive norming around elections, around democratic processes, around um, getting engaged and learning how to disagree without be, being disagreeable. <laughs> and you mentioned two of your uh, maybe co-partners in this effort in the Sunshine State Unity Network. These are names that I'm not that familiar with. So maybe you could tell us more about Republican Kurt Kelly from Ocala and Miami community leader Lisa Lorenzo, also a Republican who is from Miami. Tell us more about, about your partners in this. Sure. So Kurt Kelly it was a representative. Um, his tenure was prior to mine. Um, he's a Republican from Ocala. He was actually, prior to his tenure in the state house, he was appointed to the school board um, by Governor, um, Governor Bush at the time. And um, and sat on the school board of Ocala, and then he ran for public office. When he was there, he was known, he is absolutely a conservative. Like there's no, he is, you know, firmly centered in the middle of his party and their platform. Um, yet he also found ways of working on issues that cross the partisan divide in order to just bring about a better state for all of Florida. And so he worked on a lot of, um, a lot of bills that touched um, children in the state of Florida, that touched uh, the opioid epidemic. He actually was one of the first people to, um, to, to pass a bill to regulate the pill mills in Florida. And, um, and, uh, and our governor at the time, Chris, signed that into law. And so he's a, he is now the head of the an association of all the child serving agencies in Florida and all of the community based care organizations that fund those agencies. And that is, you know, where he spends the bulk of his time, similar to I spend the bulk of my time working on the opioid crisis. Um, but then we come together on this pro on this project because we both see the value. And then Lisa Lorenzo is one of our newest members. She's a Republican from Miami and she is someone who, when we were looking for who would have credibility as a, you know, a Republican, because we really wanted to, I didn't want to do what probably would be, would have been easy, which is find re, like never Trump Republicans to join this effort and make it like a quietly really uh, effort on the side of Democrats. I wanted to find people who, you know, who loved their party were seen as Republican by their party um, and all that meant and that I could bring that that would give credibility to this because I honestly believe that if we can't come together, Trump supporters, Biden supporters across the aisle and if our leaders can't get along, then how can we expect anyone else? And so Lisa is um, one of, she serves on a number of boards down in South Florida she has been very engaged in and also very engaged in philanthropic um, opportunities down there. She's not um, a politico. She doesn't. She wasn't a state rep like Kurt and I, but she has been a wonderful rounding out of our project and always reminds us to like, hey, if we're expecting people to do this hard work, we also need to tend to their um, to their spirit, to their mental health and well being. We need to give them these soft skills that. Um, often go kind of under discussed because they're not, you know, the sexy politics of it. This is just what makes that possible. You know, the making sure that you be that you are taking care of yourself in order to take care of the of this growing network. Our guest is former state representative Jennifer Webb, and we're speaking about her new group called the Sunshine State Unity Network. I'm Sean Canaan. This is Tuesday Cafe. We're broadcasting from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. 
And Jennifer, I wanted to mention uh, that you ha you had talked earlier about that your group has candidate principles. So tell us about what some of these principles are that you recommend to candidates and what kind of response you're getting from candidates about kind of buying in. Perfect. And these are intended to be kind of apple pie and mother's hugs kind of a things. We understand as former uh, candidates ourselves that elections can get, you know, a little a little messy and that's fine. Like bring your whole competitive spirit to the game. Like, you know, what did um, Caitlin Clark say? Like trash talking, why can't girls do it? Like guys do it on the field. Like whatever you need to do um, just before you get to demonizing your opponent. We don't want people to actually dehumanize their opponent or call for violence against their opponent. We just want, we want people, we want candidates who or, or have a honest engagement with the process that believe in hosting a civil campaign, like I said, meaning encouraging peaceful election, um, a peaceful election atmosphere during the elect pre-elections, polling, counting, all of that stuff. We want um, candidates to encourage secure voting, uh, which means to us respect voters freedom to exercise their lawful rights to register and vote free from interference obstruction or intimidation we want candidates to speak to fair oversight of elections and encourage public uh and encourage political parties and others to train poll watchers on the election process and we want candidates to trust outcomes like absolutely if you um make claims of election irregularities in accordance with laws and acknowledge the legitimacy of outcomes after the results have been certified and all uh, contest contestations decided. So like use the court process, do, you know, if you really think that there's some irregularities, like explore that, but then at the end of the day, when they're in, um, hold them up as this is what is actually, um, this is the actual results. So those, and we've been getting very good um, response to these principles um and i and i do wish that my colleague kurt could have could have been on with us today because he's been specifically speaking to um republican uh re county republican parties and you know the the county officials are really are very excited that we're encouraging people to um that we are instilling reinstalling these principles into the into this um into this election and i think that that's a very good sign we've been reaching out in the spirit of bipartisanship we uh, we will announce um elections where but where both candidates once we have uh once we're through the primary when we're where we have all candidates who've signed on to the principles so that we can put forward those races because it's really not about individual candidates as much as it is about elevating races in areas where our democracy is working well. And that's where, that's an indicator that democracy is working well. And accepting the results of elections, you know, too, not too long ago, that wouldn't have been very controversial at all, but now it, it kind of is, is one of the main sticking points of one of the major parties. So how do you, uh, how do you anticipate getting around that that stumbling potential stumbling block you know we have been we're bringing in people who agree that you know that president biden was the winner of the election and that understand even if they supported trump and president trump and his re-election bid four years ago that they're that they they understand that the election was not actually stolen and in giving them a community so that they can prepare to speak with moral authority and with the facts that again this election wasn't stolen and it's amazing how much work can be done behind the scenes of just encouraging people to um to put forward messaging especially people in positions of power that supports um that doesn't question the legitimacy of elections and that's on both sides. I mean, we're talking this year, I think the concern is on um, the Republican side that I've heard spoken most frequently, but it could be on either side. I mean, um, depending on how the polling goes. However, 
two years ago in one of our counties that what had been a Democratic stronghold and had swung to Republicans picking up a lot of seats, I had to personally reach out to um, Democratic elected officials who were questioning results saying, hey, this isn't helpful. Like, do you have specific information about this particular race that you're calling into question? If not, I would encourage you to take down that post or to back the um, results of the election for the sake of democracy. And it's amazing when I first started this three years ago, uh, elected officials thought that I was overstating their importance in, e in either ginning up or helping to tamp down, um, tamp down uh, just the general public. But now they see it as part of their responsibility and good ones really do respond regardless of party. I mean, they'll say, okay, you're right. Or I'm like, just dial it back like two percentage points and you're not, you know, and that's within the realm of the, of, of kind of what we want our democracy to look like in, in the, in the U S and so more and more elected officials are stepping up to the challenge. Now we're not in the heat of the, general election yet so um but we're building those relationships and have been for the past two years and hopefully that will be helpful in pulling people in and and making sure that um that they're not putting out messages that are that undermine or that set a new norm because what i don't think people understand is even like just calling into question makes calling into question our election processes, which have been really sound, especially in Florida for at least since the hanging chat incident of the 2000s. Um, when you call into questions and you seriously, you do undermine people's faith and trust in the election in the election process. And so, and then you can actually reduce the faith that the general public has in election, which in turn reduces turnout, which in turn, um, has consequences on who gets on who we who the parties even elect or put forward as candidates, and so it really does have a devolution of our democracy that we each can contribute to reversing. And the Sunshine State Unity Network you mentioned just a moment ago, it, one of the things that it does is it has these webinars. So who's the audience for these webinars and how can people get involved and what kind of content do you have on these? So part of, I'm sure that you've heard, like we've all heard, um, oh, you have your facts, I have mine. And what we seek to do in the Sunshine uh, or the Sun 100 is to pull people together and to get, you know, subject matter experts, national subject matter experts who are nonpartisan to present on things that are foundational to our democracy. So just two weeks ago, we had Dr. Susan McManus, a uh, distinguished professor emerita from USF and political analyst and pundit on from lots of uh, local affiliates of national um, television stations and news stations. She was on just explaining like, Here's what the polls say in Florida. And here's how you can be a savvy consumer of polling. And here's how you can talk about polling to others to encourage them to be savvy consumers. And because we hit, and um, before that, we had someone from the Election Reformers Network come and talk about primaries and um, the role that primaries play in increasing partisanship and. Um, and uh, hyper-partisanship in the United States. We've had folks come on and talk about media literacy where we, where our network has actually been able to impact and provide their feedback on trainings in order to make these, in order to make this um, training even more cross-partisan and appealing no matter who you are, because it's intended for a broad audience and we want everyone to be savvy consumers of, of media. We've had how to take care of yourself and your network. Thank you, Ms. Lisa Lorenzo, for inserting some of that in. And, and so it's a full, we really, we seek to create something together, to learn something together, to discuss something together um, every quarter. And so it is intended for 
community leaders, people who are interested in their communities and giving back and talking to people across difference. It is intended for um, folks who want to help promote a positive norm and, and help combat the um, divisiveness in our country. And all you have to do is go onto our website and register for the upcoming webinar. The next webinar, we're breaking into the groups to talk in depth about actually those three topics that I just mentioned. So we'll be, you know, dividing out and it'll be a led conversation by a moderated conversation for participants to come together to decide how they want to integrate these lessons and this information and how they want to disseminate it. And I should tell people that if you want to find out more about these webinar, webinars, I've put a link on our website, WMNF.org, a link to the webinar so you can kind of watch on YouTube. And before I let you go, Jennifer, I just want to ask you one other question. I noticed that your group, the, um, the Sunshine State Unity Network, has a supervisor of elections tour. What's that? Oh, that is actually where we go county by county and help to bring people together across party, see exact, exactly how the supervisors of election operate in any particular county. So if you're interested, reach out to me and we can arrange it. It was highly successful last election cycle in dispelling ideas of that our elections weren't safe. So you see the people counting the ballots, you see how they separate the envelopes from the voting um, from the actual ballot itself. You see how they cure the process that they use to what they call cure the ballots. And you can ask all of your questions to the supervisors of election who join us in this process uh, on these tours. Uh, my favorite from two years ago was um, Wesley Wilcox out uh, in Marion County, he could even tell you um, it was it was exactly what American democracy is and should remain, which is neighbors putting it together this event um, for the good of uh, of ourselves and our country. And so he could tell you this box that transports these machines to one of our polling locations was fabricated by Mr. So-and-so whose business has been there forever. And, and your first grade teacher at the local elementary school, she works at this polling location and she's worked there for X number of years. And it was beautiful. And it honestly did a great job of rolling back some of the cynics in the role room and keeping um, them in, and opening up their minds to maybe these national pundits who've come into Florida to disrupt our faith in our elections aren't right. And it was, it was, a, it was great. And so I absolutely will be posting those on our website and, um, and taking groups to the supervisor of election this summer. Well, I want to thank you very much for coming on WMNF's Tuesday Cafe, Jennifer. Thank you so much for having me, Sean. Thanks for joining us. Former State Representative Jennifer Webb's new group is called the Sunshine State Unity Network. It aims to reduce violence, bolster the Republic, and restore faith in our democratic institutions in Florida. And you can find out much more on our website, WMNF.org. This is Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan, and we're broadcasting from the studios of WMNF in Tampa.